Hello everybody, I'm Fabian and welcome back to the channel. This week I'll be testing the charging system on my motorcycle. I was out for a ride a couple of weeks ago and my bike just crapped out on me. I'm pretty sure the battery went, a few cells in the battery just went and I fixed that problem by replacing the battery. However, that is a sort of a quick fix. What I need to do now is get my multimeter out and run a few tests because a new battery will start the bike, but I need to make sure it's, that battery is charging and the electrical system is running as it should. But first up, an early thumbs up really helps out the channel. And if you've seen a few videos of mine now, please consider subscribing. So number one, I'm gonna test the nominal output of the alternator. Now on this bike, it is 14 volts at 5,000 RPM, which is quite high, because you could easily cruise around a lot lower than that and just sort of slowly decharge your battery. But that's what it is. Please check the manual on your bike and I'll show you how to get that done. So the way this is done is at the battery itself. You get your multimeter, switch it to uh, voltage. Now I'm looking for 14 volts, as I said, at 5,000 RPM. So I've switched it to roughly 20. If you're unsure, just go to the highest. You put the black on the black, red on the red. And that's showing me right now the battery is quite healthy, 12.45 volts. Now I'm gonna start up the bike, do the same thing, and rev it up to 5,000 RPM, and it should be showing 14 volts on here. So it took over, we're getting 12.6-ish, and I rev it up to, and I rev it up to 5,000 RPM and see what we get. That was pretty shaky for you, but I could see clearly that at 5,000 RPM, when I was rubbing it up, I was getting 14 volts on the multimeter. So that seems to be working fine on that front. Let's move on to step two. Next up, we'll be measuring the alternator, rotor, and stator itself. With this method, we're using the ohms meter on the uh, multimeter and testing for resistance between the three nodes that come straight out of the stator. If the coils within the alternator and on the stator are in good condition, there should be continuity between each three of the readings. Well, I mean, my bike needs a wash. But anyway, so on this bike, I know that the stator is in here on the left side of the bike and the continuity that we need to test is the ones coming out of the wires here as the stator is in here. And if you follow that up, uh, that's there, and it comes out as these three wires here on this plug that I've already undone. The easiest way to find it in this section is that it's the one with the three white wires. Now, when measuring for resistance coming out of the stator coils, you need to go to ohms. I go for the lowest setting here. And you also need to remember that there will be resistance on these wires that go through into the multimeter. So you need to establish, work out what they are by connecting them together. So, wait a bit. So here you can see the resistance within the wires going into this multimeter is 0.6, let's say. And according to the manual, we are looking for 0.22 ohms to 0.34. So whatever reading we get, we then need to minus, as you can see, 0.6 from it. So let's go to the bike and check that out. So let's start taking reading. So I'll stick one of the wires in here. and one in there. Oh, there we are. And let it settle and see what we get. So it was settled at nine. So if I minus the six, settled at eight, nine. If I minus the six, we're at three. Well, now it's eight, so if I minus the six, we're at 0.2. Now, I'm not sure the accuracy of this is perfect, um, but it could be a cause of concern, maybe. Let's have a look at the rest. Now, I stick, leave the black one where it is and move this one across. Let that settle. Roughly the same reading. So that minus the 0.6 is 0.2 as well. I honestly think this is okay. And to test between the final two, take that one out and stick it in there. Same reading. I think we're okay. Now that test I've just shown you 
um, I'm not a huge fan of because you need quite a high-end multimeter to get an accurate reading. As you can see there, I had point 0.9, point, there was only one decimal place where you needed two really, or even more, as many as you can get. Um, but I'll show you another way of doing uh, testing the stator, and this is what's called a dynamic test. The downside of this is that you need to be able to get your bike running. If you can't get your bike going, then this test isn't possible. But I'll show you how to do that now. So for this test, we are basically testing for AC voltage. I won't go too much into the detail of why we're testing that, but we're testing for AC voltage coming out of the same three uh, wires out of the stator. So AC voltage on these cheaper multimeters are that voltage with the wavy sign just there. So I'm gonna go to the lower one like that. Now I'm looking for 19, 20 AC volts, but more importantly is that they're more or less equal on the three readings that I take. So for this test, the bike needs to be running, so I'll start it up, and as before, I'm going to probe each of these, make sure every um, two combination is done. So looking for three readings in total. One in there, and let's test each one. Nineteen twenty. Next one. Close the 20 as well. Close the 20 as well. Okay. Also be aware that the longer you run the bike without those wires plugged in, the quicker you'll be killing your battery. So get in, get out, do it quickly. Number four, final way of testing the uh, alternator and stator is a grounding test. This is basically testing whether any of the uh, wires, the insulation around the wires, or any of them are worn out and any electrical voltage is, be is leaking out into the frame or elsewhere. This is extremely quick and easy to do and I'll show you how to do that. So here on your multimeter, basically you want to turn it to ohms and you want no reading as it is now. For example, if I go to my key and the multimeter, um, there's no leakage, there's no connection between each of them. So you should get no reading as it is on the screen. Now on mine, I've got a little alarm system, which is pretty good. So I go to my key and the multimeter, nothing. But when there is a connection, it creates a noise. So let's go over to the bike and see how that works. So what you do, you get the Negative side, connect it to the negative side of the battery or anywhere on the frame, but this is the easiest way to do it. And then you get the positive side and probe the three nodes here as we did before. So as we go number one, um, as I told you, my multimeter will make a sort of scream if there's a grounding issue, which basically means um, there's some connection that shouldn't be there going back to the bike first one that's fine second one that's fine also and third one that's fine so that tells me all the insulated wires are perfectly fine the system down towards the alternator and the coils there's no leakage there to the rest of the bike so those were four tests you can do to test the charging system on your motorcycle. That's basically testing the alternator and stator. Today, this was on my Yamaha FZ6, but these pretty much apply to any motorcycle, as long as you have the readings you're looking out for from your specific manual. Please let me know if you've got any other tests you think I should be doing. Uh, so far, as I've mentioned, tested the battery. That, that's brand new, so that's fine. I'm pretty sure that is what was the issue. The alternator and stator, seen completely fine today. If I have further issues, that could be the regulator rectifier. Now, uh, I do know how to test that, but I kind of, I kind of think it's gonna be okay. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comments, because the more you tell me, the more I learn, the more everyone else learns, and we're in it all together. So thank you ever so much for watching. Please subscribe, please hit the thumbs up button, and please let me know what you think. And I'll see you in the next video.